Hey everybody, thanks for coming back to Stamping School. Page 149, this little teeny little thing, you can't even tell what it is. Number nine on page 149 is the masking paper. And we use masking paper like we would do post-it notes. You've seen me use sorts of tape, like this kind of a tape. I mean, I made this card right here where I masked off the edges. But today I wanna show you how to like stack some teacups and put things one in front of the other using the masking paper. So if you have post-it notes, those are great too. They are a little bit thicker, so you have to be careful to make sure you trim really closely when you use it, but post-its work fine too. However, these new ones from Stampin' Up are five by seven in size and they are white, which is really nice, so you can see through them. You get 12 sheets, I think they're $7, so they're a fairly good deal. I think I had some other ones from another company that were around the same price, so it's a good price, and there's a lot in there. They look like this, they're solid white, and then they have a protective glossy sheet, and then you've got the sticky side right here. There's a split down the middle, but what I'm gonna do, for instance, on this one here, I'm gonna change the colors up, but I'm gonna show you how to put one thing in front of the other for masking. Now I'm going to be using this teacup bundle right here. Actually, it's called cup of tea bundle. And there's dies and stamps. I'm just going to be doing the stamps today. And we're just going to stamp directly on the paper. But you can see how cute they are. Like this card right here that was done by one of my talent and team members, Sarah Rigby. She stamped them and cut them out with the dies. Look, she even embossed the little limes right here and cute little tea bag. So of course you can stamp them and cut them out and that's great. But if you don't feel like die cutting and you wanna mask a little bit, I'm gonna show you how to get this effect. So when we're working on what needs to come first when you're stamping, what's gonna go behind something, the image that is the closest to you is stamped first. So in this case, I'm gonna stamp the striped cup right here toward the bottom. And that's gonna be my first image right there. Now this cup needs to go inside that, so we need to cover this line and then stamp. I was also thinking how fun it would be to do some different flowers, like this jar of flowers set. We could make it fall and you could do the sunflowers in the teacups. There's regular flowers, there's some tulips, and there's some little wildflowers. Now the stamp set, the cup of tea, comes with this little sprig of greenery and some flowers that will stamp right on top of it, or you could do some leaves. Of course, you could not put flowers in it, but I thought succulents would be kind of pretty inside a teacup too. So for some masking paper, I wanna line this across. Now this would be a case when this post-it note would work fine. You could really see what you're doing. And you can see through it because this is dark enough. You can barely, I don't know if you can even see it, it's barely there. So I'm gonna use the masking paper instead. And I'm gonna take just a piece off here, peel off the backing. You can use it over and over again, so I will probably leave this right in my stamp set. So we're gonna throw that away. And it is, it's really tacky. I kind of took just a little bit of the tack off because I found one time I pressed it down too far and it kind of lifted up my ink a little bit. So you really only need to make sure that this is right up to the edge and you don't have to press the whole thing down, but see how you can see through it now? So you can see what you're doing. We're gonna take the second teacup. Now to get this aligned, there is a little hook right there, you kind of see it, the, the little handle comes down and there's a little hook and then it kind of comes around. So right about there is where I aim and I tilt it just a little bit and it goes in pretty easily, just like that. And then you can pick it up. Now, if you don't have nails, like I don't have nails anymore, get your paper piercer or that take your pick tool that we have and you can pick it up a little bit easier. All right, so now that is behind. And if we want to do something behind again, like a little background, what we have to do is we have to cover this whole thing. So this is not going to work here. We need to make sure this part's covered. So that's where you're going to come in and you're going to stamp a little bit. And you're going to stamp your image on the masking paper, just like that. 
Make sure it's dry. Now, if you stamp on the wrong side, it's too slippery. See right here? So this is the side you want to stamp on, not this side. This one really won't dry that well. You want to stamp on the sticky part. <laughs> so you're going to come here. Otherwise, it's going to be in reverse, and it's not going to work out very well. So you stamp it, and then you trim it out closely, and it looks like this. Now, it is strong. It's very strong. I used it several times, and it really held up. It's almost like a, it's not a plastic or anything, but it's definitely a coated paper that's very strong and very thin. All right, and it will last longer if you let your ink dry before you put it on. So I found that I would get ahead of myself and that wasn't dry yet. And as I put that on, it, it wore out faster because it was getting a little wet. So we're gonna cover this up completely and then I'm gonna add something at the bottom. I went to my watercolor shapes because I thought it might be kind of fun to do something like this or this underneath, just to, so the cups have something to ground on. And I wanna bring in that papaya color to match my designer paper. So I'm gonna try the oval and see what that looks like. There's like this little skinny, it almost looks like a little plate or something. And I'm gonna stamp right on top of my masking paper, right there. And then we can peel that off. So whatever you want behind, you want to do last. I'm working with this new lovely linen paper. I think it's lovely in linen. But I love the colors with that sweet sorbet. It's got the navy. If you still have moonlight mist, misty moonlight, <laughs> the, the color just uh, retired, that would go really well with the lighter blue in here. It's got navy. It's got the papaya. It's very pretty paper sort of made to look a little textural, but I love the patterns in there. So I just did a little two inch strip right along my cardstock right here. So I'm just gonna pull from those colors. In fact, on this one, I think I'm gonna try a papaya card and the blue and see what it looks like. I've got some blends here I'm gonna work with. I've got the light papaya and it's so light, I'm literally just gonna come in and scribble. I'm okay if a little bit of white is left. And I'm literally with my brush tip, and I don't even know if you can see it because it's such a light color. I'm just kind of taking up some of that white. I'm gonna try my light night of navy and color in these leaves in blue and see what that looks like with that. Yeah, that might work. That's the one that's really closest to the misty moonlight is the light night of navy, if you still need that color. I ended up going in with just a little bit of the dark night of navy, and I'm gonna take my dark sweet sorbet. If you have lovely lipstick, or it's very close, I think, I'm just gonna add a few dots. I wanna bring in that red, just add some little whimsical dots like you would see in a ceramic teacup. Now I've added that on a sweet sorbet little scallop from the contour bundle. And there's a flower and then there's a little heart die in there. You could do that or you can do anything. To put a little tea bag on there, you really have to have cut a slit somewhere so the tea bag can hang. So since we masked it and it's nice and smooth, I'm just going to add the little heart in just to bring that red in. And then I like that. I think I could get away with that. So I can do that, or I can put it on the blue right there. Oh, I like that too. I don't know, which one do you like better? I might like the blue better. Yeah, I think I like the blue, surprisingly, the navy. But that paper is really pretty, I think. As long as you have a designer paper with three colors, you can just play around with all sorts of different combinations. So grab some of that masking paper. I think you're gonna like playing with it. There is a sale coming on June 1st with Stampin' Up! The mini catalog is going to be ending on June 30th, so everything is while supplies last with this catalog. It'll be going out, and there is a retirement list. I am putting the link in the description below the video if you want to go over to my blog and print out the last chance list. It has a sale, things from 10 to 50% off. There's a lot of things 50% off, and like I said, while supplies last while this is kind of going away. And there's also going to be a sale on kits. So any the card kits that Stampin' Up! sells, 
not paper pumpkin, but just card kits, those are gonna be on sale. Buy one, get one at half off. So all that will be on my blog post with this video. That's it, we'll see you next time. See it, learn it, stamp it.